giving back gave me an opportunity that cannot be repaid for. It's only right that I want to do the same thing for somebody else. Basically, the next generation is going through a smoother experience, um, a faster growth. This is a quick recap here of uh, what we've done last 20 years, and uh, as Bill said, um, it's been um, it's been quite a journey. Uh, it started 20 years ago with um, a dramatic event in my family, where my sister, who was 22 years old at the time, uh, died, and uh, she passed away, um, and um, in conditions that. Uh, were pretty tough because her, her, her heart failed and she was pretty upset at what was going on in the world and she was trying to make a difference. So a couple of, a couple of weeks later, um, we discovered her writings that she had left behind and um, there was a project there that uh, was basically encouraging uh, people to invest in other people. And I took this project and um, I uh, Im implemented what was my passion at the time was basketball into the project and um, founded Giving Back in, uh, in, with a motto that was uh, my mom's motto every time I was uh, going through the front door. She kept saying, never forget where you come from. And uh, that um, started a whole movement, a global movement, in which uh, I went on and uh, tried to help kids from all around the world um, to get scholarships um, through sports, uh, basketball, and education, and um, to also have the moral contract that they will never forget where they come from, and they will come back to their communities at some point and give back. And um, so that led me here in the United States, um, in the beautiful city of Newark, New Jersey, and uh, where we set up the first uh, basketball camps there, and whatever we call social business now, we're doing at the time already, and um, it gave a lot of exposure to these kids, and um, some of them are here right now. And I gave them a lot of opportunities uh, to go through their studies and uh, become, um, uh, go through a different path than what they were supposed to be. So these kids came from France, but also um, Senegal, Mali, uh, Burkina Faso, um, Niger, a little bit everywhere. And uh, we later set, on, set up uh, academies um, in, uh, in Africa of sports leadership and social leadership at the same time. And um, the whole story here is really about uh, the power of giving back. We think that giving is a wonderful act and it's an amazing act. And we just feel that it's not a complete act. Uh, when you give, uh, you, you, you fix situations and, um, and you probably heal and put a Band-Aid um, but we think that with the act of giving back, we can really uh, put the person into a position to come back and empower other people and keep the chain alive. And, um, and that's really our sustainable way for us to, uh, to, to build any, any social business. And um, we never received any grants. And we were able to put this all together because we have our alumni that, that uh, came back to the program and were able to help. So some of them are here, and um, I'm going to invite uh, Kudro Sogadzi here, who was uh, one of the first uh, uh, student athletes to come to the United States and had uh, quite a journey uh, coming from uh, some of the toughest areas in, in, in France and uh, going all the way and, and uh, working Wall Street. Kudro? Thanks, Babakar. Uh, thanks for uh, allowing us to be here today. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, for us all of us to, to be at Google and to uh, share our stories and for being part of the uh, giving back 
um, group um, and program is just a privilege, Babacar. Uh, as Babacar said, I'm, I'm from Paris. Um, I came to the States about 20 years ago. Um, actually, Babacar recruited me to play basketball from, um, from the streets of Paris and to uh, allow me to come here to the States and, uh, and play high school uh, basketball. Um, and from high school, I ended up going to college for four years and playing Division I at Fairfield. Um, I've been very, very fortunate uh, because um, I, I've, I've, um, I'm coming from a very tough area outside of Paris. It's a small town where it's, it was majority low income and uh, minority um, groups and families. And um, before I came to the States, uh, education was never a big part of um, what I believed in. I think um, there's always, you've always been in a class where there's, a, there's an athlete and uh, who doesn't work and doesn't do his homework, well, that was me. Uh, I've always been the one that sort of uh, put school to the side. And, uh, but coming to the States have allowed me to, to, uh, you know, to disregard that and to focus on, on education and sort of understand the value of education. Um, I was fortunate enough to, uh, to get a four-year degree at a, at, a, uh, at a school in Connecticut. Uh, from there, uh, I've tried to play overseas um, in France, actually, professionally. It didn't work out. But I came back to the States, went back to New York City, and uh, landed um, um, and worked at a hedge fund. Um, and um, I was there for eight years. Uh, in the meantime, um, I received an MBA. So I was going to school part-time, went to school uh, while I was working. Uh, and um, now I'm, I'm actually studying for, uh, for the LSAT to go to law school. Uh, and what Bob mentioned earlier is that it's one thing about education. It's something that you can carry with you all the time and no one can take away from you. And yes, my dream ultimately was to come to the States and play in the NBA, um, but things happened and I, I wasn't able to. I was able to sort of take on the next step of my life and do something else through education and through work. Um, and my journey is not is not over. Obviously, now I'm even looking to go to to law school. I graduate when I I'll be 40 years old. I'll be be the, the the oldest law student at the school I go to. Um, but I think it's it's one of one of the things that Nelson Mandela said. The quote is, "Education is the most powerful weapon for change." And I think uh, this is what we're trying to provide here. at giving back is to to give hope to people that whether it's through sports or through education, they can make something of themselves and it can change the world. And what I want to do and what we're trying to do is to change people's lives. And I want to be a role model for them um, uh, from that standpoint. So, um, so yeah. Thank you, Kudro. Um, Kudro is one of the uh, uh, hundreds of kids that received a, a scholarship to come to the United States and took advantage of it. Uh, we, we've had uh, a lot of basketball success stories, but uh, his story is one of the biggest success story of all because he was able to capitalize on education and, uh, and be who he is right now. So um, that's, that's also something that we, we always uh, try to push is, uh, is to understand that the more we're going to empower people with education and the more they will be inclined to also give back and to know how to give back to uh, their communities. And um, in that regard, I'm going to introduce uh, our Gershon Yabuzele from the Boston Celtics. Um, who, um, who also has a pretty unbelievable path uh, that led him not only to the, to the NBA, but also to be uh, our president for the organization here and be a social leader. So Gershon, it's yours. <clears throat> so first of all, I want to say uh, thank you for having us today. Uh, it's really important for us and uh, means a lot. So my name is Gershon Yabusele. I'm a Boston Celtics player, the best team of the... NBA, obviously, <laughs> but um, today I've, I'm really trying to, to share part of my story with you. So I grew up in uh, France, a uh, little city nearby Paris. Um, I always been playing basketball there, and then moved to a few city in France to play basketball. And uh, me, uh, in every team that I play, I never beat uh, the best player of my team. I uh, been underestimated uh, all of my career. But um, one day, Baba Carr gave me a call, and uh, him and the association really believe in me and uh, helped me through my process. Uh, since this day, uh, we always been on the phone, always talking, and then one day I had the chance to go to LA 
and uh, play against the best players in the country. And this experience for me has been a big, big, big um, part of me being here today because I had to play against the best player, uh, understand how life is, and uh, understand the change that I got to play basketball, and it was really a gift for me. So as soon as I get back from uh, this trip, uh, everything changed in my life. Uh, I just understand the things more. I uh, was thankful for everything. And uh, since this day, Baba Kari and me had a, a great contact because uh, I'm from France, and where I grew up, I grew up in a big family. Uh, we Sometimes we have uh, less Uh, so it was really difficult for me. I grew up with some of my friends. Uh, they failed. Some of them went to jail. So for me, uh, at this point, being thankful, it was just something that I was uh, dreaming, but something that I had in my head every day. Uh, it just started being a mission for me. And uh, helping the people give back to the community has been a lot. And this project for us is really something big uh, with the young, talented ladies. Uh, Asoto is going to explain us a little bit more about her story. But uh, this project really means a lot for us. Uh, like I said, the mission is in our head, but also in our life. Um, that's why we're going through everything. My dream came true in coming to the NBA. This association did a lot for me, for me and my family. And uh, today I can really say that basketball saved my life, have me through everything, and I'm really thankful for that. Thank you. Thank you, Gershon. Um, as you see, um, uh, Gershon and Kudrow here represent, well, the, the ecosystem of giving back. And uh, as far as, uh, as young student athletes that were empowered uh, through, through their endeavors and uh, that also were able to overcome their, their own problems. And uh, we, we see a lot of uh, problems all around the world. And, uh, and, and we think it's always with uh, the powerful that has to come back, come to the powerless and find the solutions. But uh, we, we know that uh, uh, in, those, in those rough neighborhoods, um, uh, there's, there's a lot of kids that have a lot of talents. And uh, if, if they're given a chance to bring their talent up in whatever it is, they, they, they can change the world because they can grow up with that mission to come back to the community and change it. Um, as as, as uh, Gershon mentioned, uh, mentioned um, right now we're trying to, to scale this system, uh, this giving back system. And the best way that we found is uh, to, uh, to put our efforts into young women, uh, especially young women right now in West Africa. And uh, I'm going to introduce a video right now that's going to tell you the story of Amsatu Diop, who's right here and uh, who's part of our program now. Growing up in Italy, I understood the word privilege when spending summertime in my beautiful native Senegal and seeing a lot of my girls' peers having no access to education and no skill that will allow them to enjoy a dignified basic life. My cousin Binta is one of the 7 million women whose social fate is doomed to fail before their life even starts. I had to find a way to break the cycle. Privilege was all I had. A scholastic education, access to global culture and thinking, and more importantly, a loving and caring single mother that gave me more than I ever needed. I realized how much some of our dysfunctional local resources had to offer. I went on collecting and recycling the small wasted piece of African craft that our 100,000 local tailors throw away every day. And I created a sustainable interior design brand named Wolof. The Wall of Solution is accessible by any girl who is a willing learner as all it takes is 20 cents, the cost of a thread and a needle. To come and acquire the basics at my free of charge workshops open to young girls that have no access to education. My vision is to sell Wall of globally and disrupt the interior design industry by giving a voice to the voiceless and yet so elegant and powerful women of Africa. 
Soon enough, Wolof will be able to tell the world a new set of inspiring tales of the hardworking, resilient, creative and traditional African woman. This community will keep growing as the girl we empower today will mentor the next generation of interior designers. They will be able to enjoy a sustainable living, break the cycle of illiteracy, and will become role models of their daughters, just like my mother has been for me all my life. Satu. <laughs> Hi everyone, thank you so much for having us here today. Um, as you saw, I am the proud founder of Wolof, but also I am the mentor of uh, the Grow Academy, one of the first mentors. So I've been, uh, I've been on the program for the past few months, and for those past few months, there have been two words that have stuck with me and have been my mantra. So those two words are embrace yourself. Uh, a lot of people ask me why I choose those two words because they've also been my Instagram hashtag for every picture that I've posted. But those two words because for the past few months I've been embracing every single fiber of myself. I've been embracing my fears, my flaws, my weaknesses, but mostly I've been aware of what is surrounding me. And as a mentor for the next generation of the Grow Academy, I want to pass all this feeling to these girls because I want them to be fearless, to be powerful, but mostly I want them to believe in themselves. Because we live in a society where everything they tell us every day is, you can't make it. And my question is always, why? It's because you're a woman. I want them to actually believe that they can if they put their mindset into it. That's why we created the Grow Academy. And it's not like any other academy because we use tools as virtual reality, video games, chess, coding, programming, boxing, because we want these girls to be challenged every day. And we want them to believe that if you put your mindset into something, you can make it. We have to break all the obstacles that are in your way in order to do that. And as you know, the Grow Academy is going to use the same ecosystem as giving back, meaning that the girls that we empower today will come back as mentors for the next generation. But <laughs> we're not like the men's here. It's not going to take us 10 years to do that. It, took, it can take us. We want these girls to be able to do that within three months. And having done this program for a week before coming here, I can assure you that it, these girls are able to give back within weeks. Within a week, they're able to teach others what they've learned. Within a week, they appropriated the program for themselves. And for me, that is, that's incredible because I now can see all the work that has been done by giving back and by grow now that it's actually is possible because some of them, we went to the giving back day where they taught all of these girls that don't have access to education how to play video games. And those girls, that same day, were able to help their others school, the other girls that are there how to play video games. And they've never been to school, they don't know what is football or how to play um, with cars. So I can assure you that this program is amazing and I'm really thankful to be here today and to speak for these girls and also to speak for myself, for my story and also for giving back and the Grow Academy. Thank you. Thank you, uh, I'm Satu. We, uh, we actually have a little video about the Grow Academy uh, where you're gonna see those girls in action. I wanted to use my passion, and my passion is fashion, to give people happiness. Turned out, as I am now a mentor of the next generation of the Grow Academy, something caught me. It was the motto of giving back. It was never forget where you come from. 
That's how Grow also is built on the transmission and the real investing in the program. We decided to focus on women because we know that women are the future. When one advances, we all advance. When one succeeds or knows how to, you know, solve a problem, we help to bring the other girl up along with her. Nobody gets left behind in the Grow Academy. Afin de déterminer notre place dans cette société qui est aussi cruelle pour les femmes, euh, qu'est-ce que vous nous conseillez Il faut aider nos filles à aller à l'école, rester à l'école, on les maintient à l'école et dans des métiers valorisants. Parce que sans cela, nous serons toujours victimes de violence. Et tant qu'on sera victime de violence, on n'aura pas les capacités pour, pour croire en nous, mais aussi pour faire ce qu'on doit faire en tant qu'être humain au sein de nos communautés respectives. Allons à l'école, apprenons, ayons un métier en tant que femme et travaillons pour montrer qu'avec la femme c'est possible. At the Girl Academy, not only do we believe in you, but we want you to also believe in yourself. Like, it's not, it's never easy. It's never going to be an easy journey. Sometimes you'll fall, sometimes you'll feel so good about yourself and sometimes it'll knock you right back down. But the point of it all is that you get up, brush off the dirt, and then we get back right on it and you know become champions, become who we truly are. Si vous dites je peux pas, automatiquement vous n'y arriverez pas. Nous sommes les ambassadrices de la Pro Académie. Ici, on est là pour vous. Si vous avez des questions, vous avez des problèmes, vous voulez pleurer, vous voulez parler, discuter comme vous voulez, on est là pour vous. Ok Ok, girl. Very, very simple English, okay? Capete? Good morning. 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 Okay, um, so this was, this was uh, the, the last video here that we're going to show. But uh, before we, we, uh, we go for the Q&A, um, just, just uh, this, this experience with the, uh, with the Grow Academy has been transforming the whole uh, organization, really, because we came to the realization that to, in order to be able to, to get powerful social entrepreneurs, it's not just about... Uh, going onto a path, a set path, like, hey, here's your mission, your vision, here's what you gotta do. But it's also about revealing the best in us, wherever it's the self-confidence, the ability to transmit the messages to the next generation, uh, the ability to listen, to, be, to have collaborative work. So and that's what those girls have been doing, and Amsatu has been a terrific mentor for all those girls, and all those girls that you see here are gonna be the mentor to the next generation as well. 
And that's how we are building this community. And we think that if every community can be built that way, every social business can be built that way, then that's the answer to be sustainable and to be able to defeat the problems of the poverty. So thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you for, uh, for having us again, Google. Thank you. I uh, just wanted to ask a, a couple questions to, to wrap up here. Um, first, you mentioned giving back days. Do you want to explain to us a little bit more about how they work and what your plans are for the future for that? So the giving back days are um, uh, days of happiness that we give to uh, uh, kids, usually, of uh, people from uh, vulnerable groups. Um, and that uh, what we want in those, in, those, in those days is to be able to reproduce what we do at the Grow Academy, meaning really give them confidence into what they're doing and show them the path of giving back in one day. And we do that in a fun way, but also it's a, it's a, it's a platform for all of us to be able to go back and give. And that's one thing that is very important in our system is that ecosystem that we put together where every, everybody can come in and be a part of it. And, uh, and so that's the giving back days, and it's been very successful because we've been able to, to touch a lot of uh, young people through that program. Uh, thank you, Babakar. Next, uh, for those of us in the audience that would like to get involved, what are some of the ways that we could help out giving back and Grow Academy? Well, um, come. Come over to Senegal. Uh, uh, you see, it's a beautiful country. It's sunny. And, uh, and more importantly, uh, those girls um, can really benefit from uh, the experiences of everybody. Uh, again, we, we, we talk about mentorship. Uh, there is no professors, there is no traditional teacher in our academy, and these are college girls. Um, but I think they really enjoy uh, having expertise and experience from all over the world. So that would be the first thing. The other thing is that we always trying to research uh, new ways to, to problem solve. Um, you saw that lab that we put together with all those different tools. Um, and if, if you have any ideas, if, if you want to be part of that, please let us know. And, uh, and the last thing is that those girls have, um, they put together all their work, they organize their work into uh, Google Drive, uh, um, uh, Google Docs, and, uh, and they share it. Uh, so they have self-evaluation um, uh, within themselves, but also we invite anybody that, could, that would want to be a mentor um, and not being able to come all the way there to also be, be able to do it that way so that uh, a girl could share, for example, her work with you. Um, well, on behalf of Google, thank you very much for coming, Babakar, Gershon, Amsatu, and Kujo. We really enjoyed hearing from you and, and appreciate the great work that you're doing for your communities. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.